We are back with Mr. Gene Davis, the gentleman next to me. Gene, we go all the way back. Oh, wow. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little time. time. Welcome, Welcome to CWS Saturday, by the way. You're we're happy to be here. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been here. I know, I know, I know. Um, do you know why you're, you're, you're starting your, your information on the summer? Oh, I got it. Tell, tell, tell us. Tell, Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, um, I am a 51-year-old father of an 8-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the main thing that I do. Um, she's awesome, man. My kid, I, you, you got you to gotta see her. But anyway, um, my background is mainly in pharmaceuticals. I was mm -hmm. in pharmaceuticals for 24 years. I made sterile antibiotics and homeopathic drugs. Um, while I was doing that, like my whole life, I've pretty much been an athletic guy, played a lot of sports. And um, I competed in a lot of different things um, during, while I was in pharmaceuticals. And I trained for those things, uh, men's league basketball. Mm -hmm. um, I was a basketball referee. I did off-road triathlons. I did mountain bike races. I was on a beach volleyball team. and. Um, you know, that, because I always had a love for fitness, it was probably like my first love. And in 2010, my company, at the end of 2010, the pharmaceutical company I worked for for 21 years, they closed up um, my department and laid everyone off. And that gave me an opportunity to transition into fitness. So I went and um, I got a certification. And uh, before, actually I was studying for a certification and I got hired as a trainer before I even got my certification. Why do you think that happened? You know, I've got to say something to the audience. This is such a likable guy. People always gravitate to you. I'm not going to go into the Air Force methods and we are saw people just flock into the guy and look, gee, do this for me, do this for me. So that came as no surprise, I guess, to you that you were hired before you got your certification. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, what what you say is is it's kind of true, but I never, because I never take it for granted mm -hmm. that it was kind of a surprise. I mean, because it happened, I was just having a conversation with um, two other parents at, while I was waiting to pick up my daughter. And they were, I noticed that they were always in tights. And I was like, what do you guys do? And one of them was like, you know, I own the gym down the street. And she was like, you know, you look like you work out. And I said, she said, have you ever trained? I said, I'm actually studying for my certification right now. She said, oh, I have to interview you. And she brought me in and hired me right away. So I started working um, as a trainer before, I said before I was even certified. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I know this is CWS as it is. I don't, I don't get into people's biographies on this particular show. show. Yeah. But you used to make, you were in pharmaceuticals, yeah. right? The yeah. old homeopathic yeah. uh, thing. And now here you are passionate about yeah. empowering and encouraging people for. Living healthy. healthy. Yes. Eating and exercising. Yes. When did this happen? When did this start? When, when, what was the trigger? What got you inspired to do this for people? Um, you know, it was something that I always thought about because when I would work out, the way that I worked out was so different that you know people would take notice and and you know I had people asking me to train them when when I was working in pharmaceuticals and I trained and I trained a few people so. Um, but what what really kind of dawned on me being a, a a man of color in fitness, mm -hmm. you know, it involved in all these different activities. Uh, so often, other than the men's league um, basketball, a lot of times I was the only minority. You know, a lot of times I, the gyms that I went to growing up, you know, living on Long Island, you know, it was it wasn't many of us. And so the thing that kind of uh, motivated me was like a desire to. Um, find some kind of way to, to, you know, bring this to my own community, uh -huh. the, uh, an appreciation for it. Because, you know, so much, so many of us grew up with, um, with, uh, you know, less than, you know, with single parent households, uh, households, um, lower average income. So our parents are typically um, working to put food on the table and clothes on our back and, and get us to get through school and if they can do that then they, they feel like they've done their job is because it's and they, they're right they have but there is no focus on or time for um 
fitness and health. And, 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 and when you look at it, it, you either pay for it. This is what I began to understand being in pharmaceuticals yeah. is that you're going to either pay for it now or you're going to pay for it later. You, you know, because all the things that happen, um, the high blood pressure, um, the diabetes, these things that come about from um, poor eating habits and, and lack of exercise, now you, you end up paying on the back end through doctor's visits, um, surgeries, um, um, the high cost of pharmaceuticals. And, and being that I made them for 24 years, I, I know what they cost. You know, so you, you do pay, 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 you pay, pay at some point. You, you yeah. pay, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's better to pay up front than it is to pay later because not only are you paying monetarily, but you're paying with the, your quality of life. Like, when, when, when your experience, experience and, and all the people you have seen, and I, I guess, guess sometimes interview for, for personal training, what is like the, the top of the list in terms of people's challenges um, or, 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 or what is the top of the list in blocking people from making that transition? From well, that, that, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting question. It's a very good question because it it's um, you know in in look in researching this, I went into it with some things that I already knew, mm -hmm. but I found some things that I didn't really expect. You know, so like for instance, with um, with for, like women of color, yeah, one of the big challenges for them is you know hair, like working out and you know, having a, a, a weave or having a um, perm, you know, it really is a challenge to like keep your hair looking the way that, or them to have their hair looking the way they want it to while working out, you know, it, because all of the sweating and, and whatnot that goes on. Um, another thing is, is culture. And this is the thing that shocked me. Like, culture. Yes, culture. Because I found a lot of information talking about how and, and when you think about it, it makes sense. The glorification of the thick woman, you know, and a lot of times if you look at the, the indications from a health perspective, women that are glorified as being thick, you know, they are at a higher risk for, for everything when it comes to um, um, diseases that, you know, impact the quality of our lives and, and shorten our life expectancy. But there's a glorification of that. And, you know, I was having this conversation recently, like everyone wants to be attractive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everyone wants to be attractive. And if our community, think about it, in, in, in most any other community, women are worried about putting on too much weight. But in our community, if a woman is, is thick, she, she doesn't want to lose weight. And if she does want to lose weight, a lot of times they have men, men who are telling them not to. I mean, that's the, the component that I did not take it. Men into, are telling yes, our men, men are telling women not to lose weight. don't yeah, and don't lose the good stuff and don't you know, like they want the woman to be, you know, thick. Like in in not even like um, in, in an unhealthy way. If you if you look at again the indications of of these people in, in the weight ranges that they're in, that there, there is no good health outcomes based on this. And, and if, a, if a woman of color is on the slimmer side, she's trying to gain weight. Now, now listen, I, again, I work in a gym. I, I can honestly tell you I have never met, um, or I won't say never, but I can count on three fingers the amount of women not of color who were, who were slim and were trying to put on weight. But it is it is very common in our community. It's, it's a cultural, cultural thing. thing. It's a cultural thing because they they want to be attractive to guys. They want guys to you know. And and I don't I'm not I don't fault them for that. You can't be because everybody wants to you know be attractive to the opposite. Well, so what, is, this, what, what is, is a typical, typical conversation, conversation um, when, when you, you have, have a consultation with a sister um, for a fitness training program? Especially if this particular sister is concerned, it well wants to keep on, uh, wants to be thick, so to speak, not be fat, but be thick. And um, what is that typical? How is that conversation like? And, and how do you get them to see the danger of not having the right ways in body mass? Yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, you have something called BMI. The, 
body mass index, which is which is really not a good. It's not the greatest judge mm -hmm. of of whether or not someone needs to lose weight because it just measures mass based on like your height. So what that mass it consists of, whether it's muscle or fat, it doesn't distinguish. I mean, but that being said, there are very few people who um, naturally have a disproportionate amount of muscle mass. I'm not bragging, but I happen to be one of them. But there's not a lot of people like that. So most people, if their BMI is high, it's uh -huh. because they have um, too much body fat. But back to your question, um, that's a really good question because you know something? I do, and this is part of the, the problem why I wanted to address this. I have never had, um, not to say that there aren't women of color in my gym, there's, there's a few that train, but I have never had um, a consultation with a woman of color. There's so few of them um, training. Like this, this is this I've never had one come in to train. Where you are. I mean, I mean that's, that's definitely part of it, but just in general, and this is, again, why I want to have this conversation, just in general, um, again, because of culture, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're, in our culture, we're taught to spend money on, on different things. Like, the first thing we're not, we're not going to prioritize our health. That's not the first thing we're going to spend money on. And it's not because, like, you know, it's easy to sit here and say that people are lazy or this and that. I don't buy that. And what I think it is, again, is that it's culture. It's not on most people's radar. And, and even if you talk to them about it, because me being a trainer, I have, these, I have had plenty of conversations with um, women of color about what I do. And when they hear what, what a session costs, they're like, you got to be kidding me. Like they, they can't see the value in spending that much money to train. And really what it is that what it is that goes into that, if they saw what it what goes into it, like what I do, what it takes to learn what I do. And, it, and there's an art to it too, because there's a science, but you have to apply that science and you have to manipulate that science for each individual to to reach their goals. So yeah, you, you can have the you can give anybody the knowledge, but can they manipulate it? And can and can they re progress and regress the exercises to match you where you're at because I could one day I could train like I have I'll give you an example I have a, a client who had never lifted a weight in his life he was 52 years old never picked up a weight then I have another client who was a college athlete and his played sports his whole life another one who was a competitive he was a top 30 downhill skier I have one that um, is a, a he does um um, Ironmans, you know, with an Ironman is a two mile swim, 125 mile bike ride, uh, and, and then 125 miles, and then they run a marathon at the end. And I've trained several people like that. And so, so you have to be able to meet people where they're at. It, when they walk through the door, you don't know what their life experiences are, but wherever they're at, you need to be able to say, okay, I'm going to put a program together that addresses your needs. And so people just look at the money and they say, I'm not paying that. But at the same time, and this is, again, why I want to get into this, at the same time, like one of the figures that I came up with in researching this is that 87%, I've, this blew my mind. So mm. I, I still have a hard time believing this figure, but apparently 87% of retail dollars spent in this country is spent by African Americans. Eighty seven percent blew my mind, man. I will ask you a question. Yes, go no, ahead. No, no, you finish that. No, I'll say I can I will give you the link when we're done. Eighty seven percent. I gotta ask you a question. I'm not this is about spending, spending money, money on fitness. Yes. When, when the body is diseased, it causes a whole chain reaction of negative yes. problems and a cost. Yes. Right? right? Yes. Um uh, disease in the community, not just for the statistics, is the whole. Um, it's the, the whole, the whole health 
the whole health, the whole health issue that comes with it, with it, with it. You know, the emotional, emotional component that comes with it, um, being diseased. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not, not just about the statistics of the one. Okay. Um, some, some of us spend, spend a lot of money on um, education. Yes. Right? Yes. We we'll go, go to motivational courses, inspirational courses, yes. teaching us how to do this, how to be a better person intellectually, yes. and how to motivate ourselves to do better business. But the irony is, James, is that if you're not healthy, all these things don't make sense. sense. Exactly. Why do you think it is about our mindset to not see the importance of being healthy, or even if you do, being poor? Well, uh, again, I think I think part of it is culture that um, you know we want to look we want to look good, and our idea of looking good is not necessarily a healthy one. For one, from the the, the hair, like I'm not gonna think about it. I'm not gonna work out because I don't want to mess up my hair. Now, you can keep your hair looking nice and have diabetes and high blood pressure and, and you know all these other things. I mean, just for instance, sitting. We, 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 we recently found out that sitting has the same impact on the body as smoking. It is that bad for you. Just, just sitting. And they can actually determine your life expectancy by finding out how much you sit every day. They, they, they can pretty much is not is not good. They can pretty much tell how long you're gonna live by how much time you spend sitting. Not only that, so but when I train people, when I, what I do first, you do an assessment with them, and in that assessment, there's something called the FMS, and it's a functional movement screen. It just basically um, gives you an insight to what uh, limitations a person has, how well they move in, in certain ways, in in Without fail, when I take a person through the functional movement screen that has a job, like say an actor or an actress or someone who, or a, a um, creative director, someone who has to be up on their feet and moving around, they slay the screen. When I, when I take someone, no matter, it doesn't even matter uh, what type of condition it, they're in. It's not about conditioning. It's not that they're in better shape than someone who sits all day. But when I take someone who sits all day and I put them through the screen, they're, they're terrible because the the impact on the body from sitting, you know, you become you're like this, so you become kyphotic. The shoulders get rounded, the hip flexors get tight because you're sitting so long. The glutes become deactivated, and I mean, and what I mean by that is your, you know, there's a there's a relationship between your brain and your nervous system that causes certain muscles to turn on and off when you do certain things. So many people sit so long that when they get up, their butt does not turn off. They call it dead ass. And their behind does not, it, the muscles do not fire. So a lot of times people hurt their, hurt their backs because the thing that protects your back is, again, this is, it, it impacts every aspect of your life. The thing that protects your back is having a strong core and strong glutes. So if you sit all day and your glutes become deactivated, you can do all the crunching and sitting up you want to, but you know, there's a big part, and the glutes are the biggest muscle in the body. So there's a huge part of the, the, the equation that is missing because your glutes don't. All right, I, 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 I mean, it's got, it's got, it's got, got me off. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I mean, it's old, but well, it's, it's a, a big chunk. chunk. I mean, yeah. a lot, you know, yeah. because, because of the, the kind of work, work I do. do. Yeah. What, what do you do with people like that? Well, what you do for them, you have to do exercises that are going to, um, the first thing you, you want to do for them is you have to get the glutes firing, you know, and there's different strategies that you can do, you know, bridges, um, you can do what's called uh, dead bugs, you can do um, step ups, different types of lunges, like a lot of people, they do lunges standing straight up, uh -huh. you know, without someone who has that issue, I will have them doing um, lunges with a, a forward tilt at the hip so that the, the glute and the hamstring area is loaded more so than, than because when you're straight, when the torso is straight up, you're basically loading your quads. And, it, and you go to the gym, I, 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 I'm gonna challenge you to do something. When you go to the gym, 
look around and especially with the women and you will see look at some of the women who are fit look at them when they're walking towards you from the front and you will see that their quads are are toned and and you know they have some some size to them and then watch them as they walk past you the quads are moving because they're they're active when they walk past you look at their glutes and their glutes won't move at all because even though they're working out because they sit all day and they don't know how to activate their glutes they their glutes are just not activated. So their their butt is not moving the way it's, it's supposed, supposed to move. The way it's supposed to move. You know, the glutes are deactivated and that, that person is at at risk for injury. <laughs> I mean <laughs> I'm serious. I just listening to just talk. No, I'm enjoying your questions because I mean, your questions are good. Okay. Somebody who sits a lot. Yeah. Needs special kinds of exercises, right? Yeah, well, well it's not even it's, yeah exercises, but you we have something when you have do a session. I have people foam roll. So in what foam rolling do, does, you have um, you you have tissue that covers all the muscles, and it's called myofascial tissue. Mm-hmm. And that tissue, a lot of times, when you see that someone has restrictions in how they move, people tend to believe that. It's because they have tight muscles. You know, they think that the person is tight. That's why their movement is restricted. No. And a lot of times it's, no, it's not the muscle. What it is, is the fascia. The, the, the muscle, the, the tissue that covers the muscle, it, it has adhesions and it binds and it, it, it lacks moisture. Like, for instance, if I'm like this all day, the fascia will do what you teach it to do. So if I, if I sit like this, forwardly rotated in the kyphotic position, the, the fascia tissue, and first of all, it's going to become dehydrated because I'm not moving, and it's going to just record that position. So do you notice that you see people walking around, they're like this? Yeah. It's not the muscle, it's the fascia. So you use foam rolling and different exercises to external, because that's all internal rotation. I see people in the gym on the floor, and I'm like, what, what, what is this? What is oh, this? It's, to, it's to bring, it's to bring, it, was it, to it brings blood to the muscle, it brings, and it brings um, moisture to the fascia, and, and if you do it correctly, it breaks up the adhesions and allows you to be able to move better. Then the next strategy is to do exercises. If, if you're internally rotated, now we have to do some external rotation to open you up. So I do a lot of external rotation with people, um, you know, at, this, at the uh, shoulder girdle, um, working on thoracic spine rotation, and also a lot of, um, um, core, core engagement and and glutes before we even work out, like to get those things firing, because their 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 body is so used to those things not being activated that if you start working out without doing that, those things aren't going to function. So with you, it's not just okay. Here are some exercises. No, not at all. Your biceps, the build your chest, the build this. No, much much deeper than that. Much deeper than that. Let, Let me, me go, go to the, the chat, chat room, room right? Okay. Um, uh, JC said, black women need to know also that they are a third of the population that end up with Alzheimer's disease. Studies have shown that diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease, which exists at a high rate in the black community, contribute to Alzheimer's disease. I've, I've heard that that is true. I've read that that's true. I heard. I've read that that is true. I mean, that's a good point because the, in in all of this, Alzheimer's never came up in all in all my research. But I have read that mm-hmm. that those things contribute to Alzheimer's. I mean, but you know, I don't want this to be like a all negative. The the, the thing that the thing that really you know kind of touched me in all of this is that if you look, it's, and this is for black women in, in particular, black women are killing it, man. I mean, they're going to college at a higher rate than pretty much anybody mm-hmm. you know when it they're getting like um 60 66 of the um um postgraduate degrees you know 71 percent of the doctor doctorate degrees of of uh black folks so i mean they they're there's over a million business owners black women a million, and they employ over a quarter million people besides themselves. I mean, they're doing a lot of great things. There, there is no female segment of the population that is 
at, that works at a higher percentage than black women. Yeah. You know, and that's been true since black women have been in this country. So like the the thing is that motivated me to do this is is like, okay, you see all of these good things going on. I mean, black women are still unfairly paid. They make sixty four. Like you always hear the the figure that um, that women make seventy seven percent, seventy seven cents to every dollar that a man makes. But black women only make sixty four cents to every dollar that a white man makes. So you know. It's not all roses, but regardless, black women are in, in what they can are responsible for and what they can do to better this situation, they are absolutely slaying it. Mm-hmm. But that the sad part of that is that, okay, you're doing all of this stuff. You 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 need to have the quality of life and and, and health that goes along with it. Why work so hard to not even be able to enjoy it because of these things that you're doing that, you know, are detrimental to your health, the not working out because of your hair or not working out because, you know, even though you spend all this money on, on, on clothing and, and hair and things of this nature, you, when it comes to spending money on your health, just because it's not something that is the norm within the community, you, you don't do it. Or your man is giving you oh. a hard time about you losing weight because he wants you to keep, you know, the fat booty or whatever. You know, with all, with all this knowledge you're dropping on us here, this, this um, uh, familiarity, you know, yeah. uh, I knew you had to come back at some point. Oh, man, anytime you invite me, I'm here. Um, you know how do people find you? Um, well, my, if you're an Equinox member, you find me at Equinox. But oh, if you're not an Equinox member, um, I, I don't really have a website. I, I've really built my business by word of mouth, but I will give out my email address okay. and and my phone number. I mean, my clients, I I text them more than I do okay. anything. And I, and I like that. I actually prefer that, mm. you know, because to me, an email is kind of impersonal, you mm. know, and I'm dealing with people. Like a, a text or a phone call for me is better because I, I, I want to have a conversation with the person. I know most people do business through email. I really don't. I, I do my Equinox business through email of course, because I have to yes that's that's the way Equinox is set up but I'm a people person and so I'm I'm I prefer to be so I, you know so I, what was that, what was that number? so my number is 631 682 5164 621 yeah 5164 and my email address is my name Eugene Davis Eugene Davis Davis, Davis. yes 1964 at gmail.com. Or it's Eugene Davis, one nine six four. Let me let me write this in. Yeah. E-U-G-E-N-E. Uh E-U-G-E-N-E. D-A-V-I-S. Yeah, one nine six four at where? At Gmail. Gmail.com. Yeah. I mean and um the phone number is six three one. Six, six eight, eight one. six four. Okay. Uh, yeah, one, one thing I want to say, man, is that uh, when I came in, when I got into the fitness industry, like being able to, you know, help my own community mm-hmm. was like at the forefront of my thought process. And and as we speak today, to me, it's my biggest failure. Like I, I have not been able to make a dent the way that I want to. You take it personally. I take it personally because, I mean, I've been able to do some things that I never thought I would be able to do. I trained three celebrities. I have, I've hit top 100 in Equinox, you know, a couple of times. I'm, I'm consistently one of the highest performers. Um, How does it stop me? Just, I just do what I believe, man. Mm-hmm. Like, like, to me, I look at, I look at fitness like this. People, love to look at fitness from an aesthetic standpoint and that's valid is who doesn't want to look good but if you look at the the body the body was made to work in an integrated fashion like we go in the gym and we isolate everything we isolate the muscle groups and that's how we work them and then we go out in life and, and we try to yeah most people do and then you go out in life and you try to integrate that movement 
So I don't train people that way. I train them. The body works in an integrated fashion. I train the body in an integrated fashion. You know, you know that, that you said, said that, I remember, I remember reading a manual of time or a document on the ABC training. Yeah. And one of the things they said is that what they emphasize is that they, these guys are totally fit. I mean, fit beyond imagination. But what they do, they focus especially on the kind of muscle muscles that are necessary in sort of movements. Like if you have a plan of walls, there's sort of types of, you know, coordination, sort of kinds of muscles that are have to be exercised and, and trained. Yeah. And, and so, so these, these guys, guys can do things that the ordinary person will not be able to do yeah. because of the training. So this is what you're talking about. The core. Yeah, and even you bring up the Navy SEALs, like, I'm not saying this to brag, but I, I know how they train, and I could improve the, how they train a great deal because the, the, the shortcoming in what Navy SEALs do mm -hmm. is that they, they overuse movement patterns. You know, so usually when people get hurt, is because they're, you know, they're overusing a movement pattern. I mean, we basically, think about it. We kind of train in a box. Think, think about life. My body is designed to move in any direction at any time that I want it to. I can rotate, I can move laterally. I can do both at the same time. I can move forward, I can move back. I can have level changing. All of these things going on at the same time, but we get in the gym and we go up, down, and we go front, back. And we, we only lift weight vertically through the field of gravity. But every time we go out, if you play a sport, name one sport where you're, or even in life, where when you exert force and you're not exerting it horizontally. You know what I'm saying? But we do all our lifting vertically. But we exert force horizontally through the field of gravity. So why don't we exert force horizontally through the field of gravity? If, why don't we lift horizontally through the field of gravity if that's how we exert force in life? You mean, you mean like some of those machines where you push? Not even a machine, because when you're in a machine, I don't use machines at all. Let's get that straight. The only thing I use is a cable machine. Okay. That's the only machine I will use. And that's because of the freedom of movement that it, that it gives you. But in a machine, you're sitting down. When do you exert force sitting down? If you're going to exert force, you're on your feet. 90% of the things you're going to do, you're going to be on your feet. I want to hear something with you. There's a particular machine in the gym. Yeah. Where you're, you're supposed, supposed to sit down, down yeah. right? Yeah. The, the handle is about chest, chest or chin uh, height, yeah. and it's, it's curved. Yeah. You, you know where we're going there. Which you put, put the inside, side, and, and you put your chest. chest yeah. yeah. All right. I, I flip it around. around. Yeah. I stand, I stand facing the machine, and I lift. I lift that up weight. Yeah. I, you know, do shoulder presses and so on. Then and I discovered something, something else while I was doing that. I could literally show the press on my way down to squats with it. So I've actually invented an exercise <laughs> that <laughs> contradicts <laughs> some of the guys in the gym. Yeah, what are you, you doing? But yeah. what I found is, is that, that when I'm done, my whole body is, 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 is in pain or it's got up in the workout. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, you know, I stand up instead of sitting down. So you found a better use for the machine than what it was invented for, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but. You know, to get back to what we were talking about, like I, I, I want to find a way uh -huh. to have an impact in my own community, and this is really why I'm here talking to you, man. Because, you know, I mean, for instance, um, African American men live on average five years less than white men. True. African American women four years less than white women. Like we're we're doing all this stuff to to try to improve our quality of life, our incomes, all these things. But if we're not going to take care of ourselves, and we, first we have to know how, and we have to know what what is it important. Like, is it more important to be this thick person or whatever when, you know, down the road you're going to have these health problems? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I don't think, I would hope that m most men, knowing what they're asking of their women when they're pressuring them, to be, you know, quote unquote, thick. That if they knew the the health implications of what they're asking, that they would have a change of heart. And you know, and if that guy doesn't, then that woman really doesn't need to be with that man. You know, because what, does he care about her, or does he care about what she represents to him? You know, some sort of caricature. Of a, so how, 
what steps, steps are, are you using to get, get this NFT? Well, coming here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my brother. That's, that's, that's one. one. And, and what I try to do is, no, you know me. I'm, I'm a very friendly guy. I have no problems talking. So, I, And I'm, I'm more of a personal guy. Yeah. So I talk to people. Sometimes I post things on, on Facebook, but more than anything, I just, I just talk to people and try to get them to look at things from a, a, a different perspective than the one that they've been fed. Because in every area of life, regardless of race, you have something that's called conventional wisdom. And in our community, the conventional wisdom is that a woman is fine as if she's thick. And if her hair is, you know, um, permed or she has a weaver, there's, there's a certain aesthetic that is, you know, preferred. Not that, I mean, there's plenty of people, myself included, yourself included, who love women with natural hair, but there's a whole community out there that likes something different. Mm -hmm. And so, like all the all the all the conventional wisdom that is detrimental to us as a people, that's what I want to challenge. If you were <coughs> given the opportunity to perhaps work at a community center, yeah. knowing fully well that a lot of um, Black men and women will show up. And the cost is somewhere very subsidized. Would you do that? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Because, you know, it's it's tough, man. Like, every day, listen, I have great clients. I can't complain. I have great clients. My clients are so supportive and they're like my friends. They're like family. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I love them and I love working with them. But I want to bring some of that to my own community, too. You know what I'm saying? Like to work with people and and have them like for instance, my clients will send me articles from the New York Times about um, things that I've talked to them about in in what we're doing and how we're working out. And they will see an article basically supporting what I've said and what we're doing, and they will send it to me. You know, so it's like I I want that with my. And they're they're feeling good because they're like, wow, this is, you know, what I'm doing is being validated by, you know, a higher source, and it gives them confidence in in me and what we're doing. But I want to bring that to my own community. Like I've put in a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of well, research. I because, because I remember when you made this transition. Yeah, I remember you yeah. telling me that I'm going to do. Yeah, Actually, I remember we were talking about it. Yes, you knew me before I became a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> you We had this conversation many times. One of the things I remember saying, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all in, I'm going to do the right way. Yeah. I remember, I remember you saying, saying that. Yeah. And I did. I, I did. did. And it turned out better than, I mean, you know, hey man, you read the paper and you, you read about this person, that person, and, 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 you know, you read about people who they're quote unquote like a celebrity trainer. I never saw myself. Right. As being a guy doing well, training. I just saw myself training people, but yeah, I got three of them. So, like, that's not something that was a goal and it happened. Yeah. But this is a goal and it hasn't happened and it bothers me. It is going to happen. You know, it has to happen. Let I remember saying that. It is going to happen. Well, a lot of things you've said have, yes. have come true. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. A lot of things you said have come true. We, we've had it is, many it is This is the start. And I. I, 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 I let me say this on the air. I'm going to create a space from time to time, Sunday afternoon, yeah. come on and talk because we need help. We do. We need health advice. We need fitness advice. advice. I've, I've learned, learned some things from you in a short space of time that, I, that we've sat down here together, together that um, I've never heard before. And, 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 and you, you can't, can't put a price, price on that. You can't. Right? You can't you put a really price on your health. You know? Mm -hmm. Gene, you know, I. I I mean, I mean, it's, it's like, like I need to, to bring this to a close, but, but we have to, yeah. you know, time is on us. Yeah, I want to say one thing yeah, before, yeah. before I get off. And this is something that it's even on, like, if you went to Equinox and you saw, because um, they have all our pictures up, yeah. and, and you saw, like, what my skill set was and what my, like, my model is, it's that health is the first wealth. Health is the first wealth. Wow. You know, and, and I believe that. Like, if you're not healthy, then you're, you're poor, no matter what you have. It's the foundation of all It is. It is the foundation. Mm. And I want to see 
you know, my people healthy. You know, that's that's the bottom uh, line. I want to see my people healthy. I mean, getting everybody else healthy, I, I need to get my people healthy. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe Gene is back. Yeah.